You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Greetings, everyone. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily, episode 1475. Today's tip features Michelle Barr from Wrightley Equestrian Center in Louisiana. And together, she and I share some, some tips and techniques for reducing the frustration brought on by unruly water hoses in the barn. And speaking of frustration, biting flies are pretty frustrating for both you and your horse this time of year. So we would like to say a big thank you to Spalding Fly Predators for sponsoring this episode. I am so happy to welcome back to the show Michelle Barr from Wright Lead Equestrian Center, who is here with some help for those of us who suffer from the stresses of hose hassles. Yeah, I know one of the problems that we have here uh, is people are so excited about getting to wash their horse or they're in a hurry because we're going to a show or or they're just in a hurry in general. Um, The hose gets to drug around, the horses stand on it, blow a hole in it, and it seems like you're just constantly repairing the hose, getting a new hose. The hose is just a problem. Too big for the area. Too short for the area. You just can't get it right with the hose. You know, <laughs> maybe it's just me, but that just seems to be how it is. So, a friend of mine has a farm, and she has one of those boom arms on her wash rack, like they have at the car wash, and it turns 360 degrees. It's mounted to the roof. And the hose is off the ground. Nobody's getting tangled in it. Nobody trips on it. It lasts longer because the shoes don't cut through it. And everybody's happy. Really? How interesting Mm -hmm. is that? So, Mm -hmm. huh. I imagine, you know, if you're a short person like me, it's a little hard to get it up there. (laughs) (laughs) You have to have a nice ladder. But once it's up there, I, I think it's just beneficial for everybody. Well, it is very frustrating, like you said, when the horse steps on the hose. Not only do they um, uh, mess up the the bathing process, eventually they put holes in the hose, which is even yeah. more frustrating. And then you spray yourself and you don't need to. Yeah, and then you're out there with the duct tape fixing the hole in the hose, oh, and then it yeah. just goes on and on and on. And then yeah. by the yeah by the end of the week, everyone's grumpy. Yeah. Yeah. When you get the new hose. Oh, God, didn't I just get a new hose? Yeah, didn't, yeah, next week. Now, have you ever tried those hoses? They came out a number of years ago that are all curly like an old-fashioned telephone cord. Have you ever tried those? Yeah. What do you I think? I did. You know, they just got in a knot. Yeah, it's been they my experience that they knot. did the same thing. They got in a knot. And they they just didn't, they just weren't sturdy enough for what we've got going on here. Yeah. They were easy to kill. Easy to kill. And yeah. if you're OCD like me, I was constantly unwinding that dadgum thing and try, trying to make it lay right. And You would get that little kink in it just like the telephone with. used to. Yeah. 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 I always have to undo the telephone and, and sort, out the, sort out the cord. It's just... Yeah. Defect in my brain. Yeah, I don't care how kinky the regular hose is, but the the curly Q pigtail right one. It ha- when it got that little funny shape in the middle of it because it yeah made me mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The regular hose it doesn't bother me, not nearly as much. But yeah, this little curly hose I want it to lay straight. Yeah. Now those are nice if you're traveling, and you're you have limited space in the trailer. Those are nice, and they're lightweight. And they do have some pros to them. So, yes, I agree. It's a, it's a great travel item when you would love to have a hose when you're going to a show or something and overnight stabling, and it is lightweight, convenient, take it on, take it mm-hmm. off. Yeah, I agree with you there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but for everyday use, it flunked for me. Sorry, guys, who makes yeah, the, I guess they're out as an advertiser, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they're probably not. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. And I could have turned that around and done better with it. I got you some advertising. <laughs> One of the things that we have recently discovered that has been oh so useful when it comes to uh, bathing our horses, whether it's a sudsy bath or rinsing them off after a ride, is there are a number of companies out there who now make um, washing uh, soap for horses, shampoo, but it comes in this little dispenser 
um, container that you hook right onto your garden hose? Oh, do those work? I've seen them advertised. I have, and I've used a couple of different brands, and I have my favorite, which just happens to be Healthy Hair Care brand. Um, I like the soap that's in that one best. I think it is a perfect balance of clean yet not dry and crunchy. You know, how it's if it's too yeah. plastic, it can be dry and crunchy. Um, but the dispenser, I thought, am I really going to like this? Because I'm real kind of old yeah. school bucket sponge, things like that. Yeah, me too. Loved it. It made it, especially when you have horses that are fussy when you wash them and they're stepping around and doing this and doing that. Loved it. The dispensing machine. And you can also get the dispenser from the garden department and add your own shampoo. If you don't don't want to do that. But I I just buy the gallon refill and keep using my healthy hair care because I'm kind of addicted to it now. So uh, do not discount the benefit of that because you can use the cleaning product the shampoo, and you can also yeah. put liniment in there. Hello. Well, that's what I was just going to ask you, if you could do liniment, because yes, that sounds can. like a great idea. Yes, you can. Um, again, Healthy Hair Care makes one in a dispenser already, but again, mm-hmm. you can get a dispenser separately and use your own, and you would be amazed at how you can cover the horse with a lot less liniment than you could using a sponge and a bucket. Yeah, you don't have quite that runoff. Right. Whenever you sp- throw a sponge full of, of liquid onto a horse, at least one third of the liquid is on the ground. You know, it just yeah, it doesn't stick to the horse. True. It doesn't. It stick doesn't. To the- it doesn't. But I will admit that there's something that just seems right about putting liniment on a horse that way. Maybe because I haven't tried it with the new sprayer. Yes, and that that I was will, it. Because I, I try it with the new sprayer. Old I'm school. You want, you want to touch yeah. them, you know, and feel them all over. That's true. Uh, but yeah. once once I used it and discovered how thoroughly I covered the horse with the liniment, and how liniment I how little liniment I used to do it, I was all over it. After Work I tried it, that, huh? I'm going, dang, where, where's this been all my life? Because I got all the really? parts of the horse I wanted to, with no gaps. Mm-hmm. It it got through the hair. Yes. <laughs> That's such a good point. Yeah, so um, don't discount it, folks. Give it a try. Borrow someone else's if you're really reluctant and see if you like it, too. <laughs> cool. There you go. So That's very good. Yes, and Michelle, you are chock-a-block full of great ideas for taking care of our horses better, but also uh, riding better. And I know as a BHS certified instructor and ISSO certified instructor and judge, you do clinics and seminars all over the country at whatever time of year, whether it's hot or cold. So tell folks sure. how they can contact you if they're interested in having you come out to do a clinic or seminar. So the best way to get me is usually email. And you can find the email address on the webpage, which is Um You can look up Write Me Equestrian Center on Facebook. We have a page, and it's going to be covered with baby pictures soon. Or you could just, uh, if you happen to have a, a pen and paper handy, write down M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E at rightlead.com and just email me straight. Especially with performance horses, flies can really be a nuisance. Fly predators are a great investment of all the different poisons and insecticides and different things you could use. I don't know of anything that is more economical and more effective than spalding fly predators. Well, there you have it. Horse Radio Network has thousands of engaging podcasts for horse people, and you can have them sent right to your phone. Just subscribe via your favorite podcast player. This is Coach Jen, and I will be back again soon with another tip. Until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements made by guests on the Horse Tip Daily. Please use your own judgment when listening to the tips on this show. <laughs>